They say the high-end luxury market has no crisis, and even in tough economic times, luxury brands still fill their coffers even more. From this premise emerged Farfetch, an e-commerce platform that brings together the world's leading luxury brands in the fashion industry and has managed to deliver products to the most diverse locations. Created by Portuguese entrepreneur Jose Neves and based in London, England, the company has become the world's leading reference in the e-commerce of high-end luxury items and even went public on the stock exchange in 2018. However, what seemed like a crisis-proof business ended up succumbing to its own success and generated a crisis that melted away over $23 billion. Pioneering and organizing major luxury brands in the same online space, the company emerged in 2008 with the proposal of boosting sales of luxury items from multi-brand boutiques. This was because, initially, the idea was to sell items from physical multi-brand boutiques that would gain sales reach with the help of the Farfetch platform. It was a win-win situation. Boutiques would sell their products online on a consignment basis with a huge reach, and Farfetch would earn a 30% commission on sales without having to acquire any inventory since it only handled luxury items to take photos and publish them on its website, then forwarded them for delivery, with both logistics being outsourced to other companies. With this unique global intermediary feature, the platform gained traction and gained the trust of various investment funds that poured hundreds of millions of dollars and helped the business expand to multiple countries. In addition to boutiques, the platform also began to serve as a showcase for major international luxury brands, which saw in the strength of the company an opportunity for their products to reach countries where they had no physical presence. Especially because, from 2008 until now, Farfetch has built a distribution chain capable of delivering items to 190 countries, with enormous reach and a virtually inventory-less business model. The company has become a kind of intermediary in the relationship between boutiques and brands with customers from all over the world. With a portfolio of about 100 partners between brands and boutiques, which gave it tremendous success and even enabled a billionaire initial public offering, IPO, in 2018. The IPO was a great success, with shares rising more than 40% on the opening day, and from there until 2023, year after year, the company increased its revenue, surpassing $1 billion in annual revenue in 2019. With so much success, it even ventured to open some physical stores in Europe to serve even more customers with different profiles and not even the pandemic was able to slow down the company. Despite the closure of its physical stores, the increase in online demand caused sales to soar. $1.5 billion in 2020, $2.2 billion in 2021, and $2.4 billion in 2022. Such an impressive growth that the company reached its peak valuation in 2021, when it surpassed $24 billion in market value. However, even after 2022, with a new high, problems began to multiply. Until then, despite all the success, the company continued to burn investors' capital. And even when its valuation was at its peak in 2021, it closed that year with more than $400 million in losses. What apparently did not bother investors, since they saw in Farfetch the same path of temporary losses that had been faced by other startups that became giants, such as Amazon. However, the same pandemic that led the company to break revenue records also exposed problems and deficiencies in the business model. First, the relationship with high luxury brands was not the easiest. Like all e-commerce, Farfetch attracted customers based on discounts and coupons, which brought concerns to the brands regarding the perception of their brands. After all, the goal of the brands is to sell expensive so that the perceived value is high, but Farfetch offered items from the brands with significant discounts and purchase incentives that affected the brand's value perception and even the sales of the brand's own stores. After all, for consumers, it was better to buy online and with a discount than to pay more in the brand's own store. Thus, the relationship between the brands and the platform worsened every year. This led some brands to break direct relations with Farfetch and others to no longer provide all their catalog items to the company, but only those that were already promotional in their physical stores. With its attraction based on discounts and coupons, Farfetch faced difficulties in retaining customers, suffering from a short purchase lifespan. In practice, the company spent a lot to attract customers who only made a purchase once and did not return. This resulted in a dependency on creating new incentives to attract new customers, significantly increasing costs and generating losses. Furthermore, to make sales, the platform had extraordinary expenses on marketing, traffic, and influencers who promoted the site and the items sold. The more sales made, the higher the cost associated with these areas, adding to the cost of sale, which included shipping and handling of the products, completely outsourced and representing a significant portion of the cost per sale. On the other hand, Farfetch faced external problems. The same pandemic that boosted sales also showed major brands that they could sell on their own, on their own platforms, 
without having to share a large portion of the sale with Farfetch or another partner. Several brands decided to break ties with the company, selling their items independently, which dispersed sales across different channels. Farfetch's own performance was the trigger for the crisis. Until 2023, revenue had increased annually, but that year saw a substantial drop in revenue. In 2023, revenue fell to about $500 million, compared to $2 billion in previous years. In addition, the company recorded an annual loss. This setback highlighted that Farfetch's business model was rapidly regressing. Faced with this situation, investors' patience ran out and confidence in the company drastically decreased. The shares plummeted in January 2024, leading founder Jose Nevis to step down from the leadership of the company and putting it on the brink of bankruptcy. With over $500 million in accumulated debt, Farfetch was acquired by the South Korean Kong Group, which has not yet announced major changes to the platform. However, its continuation remains uncertain, showing that, in the business world, stability is an illusion.